Canada is the second largest country on Earth by land area. Its picturesque landscapes, featuring majestic mountains, shimmering glaciers, and pristine lakes, attract over 4 million tourists annually. Moreover, numerous sensational discoveries are made by archaeologists within this country, some of which you will learn about in this video. Enjoy watching. On December 29, 2010, the eponymous river in Goldstream Park turned a neon green color. Within a few hours, the strange hue disappeared as if it had never been there. Canadians were very surprised by this incident and demanded answers. Fortunately, park staff managed to collect samples of the discolored river water. Research showed that the water contained a fluorescent substance. This synthetic material is not highly toxic, but it can cause allergies in some people. How did this chemical end up in the river? Apparently, it was someone's prank. Who did it remains unknown. Canadian authorities merely reassured their citizens and advised those with allergies to avoid contact with Goldstream water. The bright green color of the river certainly looked striking. However, before pulling such a stunt, one should consider the environmental impact it could have. The Capilano Suspension Bridge is one of Canada's man-made attractions. Located in Vancouver, British Columbia, what makes this bridge appealing to tourists, you may ask? The fact is, Capilano is recognized as the longest suspension bridge in the world. Positioned 70 meters above the river of the same name, it stretches 136 meters ahead. The bridge was originally built in 1889 by Scottish engineer George Grant Mackay. Initially, it was meant for quick access to a sawmill, but over time it was adapted for visitor use. Many tourists are enamored with this place. The picturesque landscapes, the smell of pine, unity with nature, and a chasm beneath your feet. But of course, not everyone will dare to walk on such a bridge. For those who are afraid of heights, this place is definitely not recommended. In 2007, archaeologists from the University of Reading conducted excavations in Dinosaur Provincial Park in the province of Alberta. During the research, they discovered unique dinosaur fossils. Previous finds were fragments of the skeletons of ancient animals, but this time, the archaeologists managed to find a real mummy with well-preserved skin. The mummy belonged to a young hadrosaur, a herbivorous dinosaur. Analysis of the remains showed that the animal died about 75 million years ago. After its death, the dinosaur fell into a river and sank deep into the mud. For this reason, its body was naturally mummified. Hadrosaurs were a common species in what is now North America. Therefore, archaeologists often manage to find remains of these dinosaurs. However, finding a mummy of a young hadrosaur was a first for researchers. This discovery allowed scientists to learn details about the anatomy and life of the prehistoric animal. Over 10 years ago, residents of the city of Sault Ste. Marie began noticing an extremely unpleasant smell of rotten fish. As time passed, the stench grew stronger, and people could no longer tolerate it. It was later discovered that the awful smell originated from a fish sauce factory built in the 1990s. The owner of the factory was a native of Vietnam. For four years, the factory had been profitable, but everything changed when the owner began expressing unfounded complaints against the Canadian government. This caught the attention of multiple regulatory agencies. Investigations revealed that the factory was delaying workers' wages and, most importantly, was operating under unsanitary conditions. Following this, a series of inspections were initiated. Unable to cope, the factory owner decided to abandon the business. Whether out of desperation or intentionally, he left tons of seafood in large vats. This led to a large amount of fish beginning to rot, filling the area with a horrendous smell that plagued the residents of Sault Ste. Marie. Eventually, the liquid from the vats began to leak into rivers, poisoning the environment. Despite this, authorities were inactive for a long time. Only after a couple of years were the factory's drains finally sealed with cement. 
Hitchhiking can seem like an exciting way to visit many towns and cities in a country. The romance of the road, new acquaintances and conversations are all part of the allure. However, it should be noted that due to high levels of crime worldwide, this activity can be very dangerous, not only for the hitchhikers, but also for the drivers. We can never truly know who the person is that we decide to pick up. But it's a different story when you encounter a hitchhiking robot on the road. It certainly can't rob or murder anyone. We live in an age of high technology, so it's no surprise that such a robot exists. This unusual traveler was named Hitchbot and was created by Canadian developers David Harris Smith and Frauke Zeller in 2014. In interviews, the creators mentioned that they wanted to conduct a social experiment to understand whether robots and humans could learn to build trusting relationships. During the experiment, Hitchbot traveled hitchhiking all across North America. The developers considered the fact that their creation could be stolen by dishonest individuals. Therefore, they used inexpensive electronics and household items in its construction. The cost of Hitchbot was a little over $1,000. The developers also tried to make their programmed machine somewhat human-like. For example, the robot's torso was made from a bucket, its arms and legs were made from pool noodles, and it even had gloves and rubber boots. The robot was powered by solar panels attached to its body. To attract drivers' attention, it signaled by raising its right arm. Hitchbot ran on the Android platform and was equipped with motion sensors, Wi-Fi, and a GPS module. It had a built-in camera for taking pictures and recording video. Speech recognition and synthesis allowed it to have conversations with people. Hitchbot's first successful journey was in Canada in 2014. From July 27th to August 21st, it managed to cover 10,000 kilometers by hitchhiking. In 2015, the robot began its journey on the roads of Germany, the Netherlands, and the USA. Unfortunately, on August 1st of the same year, an unknown perpetrator in Pennsylvania destroyed the robot, smashing it to pieces. Thus, due to vandals, the journey of Hitchbot came to an end. One of the most recent discoveries of 2023 was the skull of a terrifying animal. In this photograph, you can see that just its head was almost the size of a human and its impressive fangs indicate that the animal was a predator. This find shocked scientists. They have never found anything like it before. Therefore, paleontologists are bewildered, having not the slightest idea of what species this animal could belong to. Scientists are now studying the remains. For now, they intend to determine the age of the find. This information will give paleontologists a starting point for discovering a new species of animals. In 2021, in the territory of Yukon, near the Last Creek River, a rare archaeological specimen was found, a mummy of a prehistoric wolf pup. The local people named it Jur, which translates to wolf. Professor of Paleontology and Anatomy Julie Meachin, using non-invasive research methods, was able to study the pup's remains more closely. The wolf pup's body was 41.7 centimeters long, and its weight was 670 grams. This data allowed scientists to determine that the pup's age at the time of death did not exceed six to seven weeks. The wolf pup was female. The animal died about 57,000 years ago due to a lack of air. Scientists suggest that the pup got buried underground after the entrance to its den collapsed. No remains of its mother were found, likely because she was out hunting at the time. One could say that the unique mummy of the ancient wolf was discovered thanks to global warming. For thousands of years, the pup's remains were stored in a glacier, which began to melt due to rising air temperatures. In 2017, Canadian fishermen began to find strange transparent creatures resembling cucumbers off the coast of British Columbia. These turned out to be pyrosomes. Pyrosomes, or fire bodies, belong to the tunicate class Salpida. Typically, they gather in colonies that can range from 20 centimeters to 8 meters. Giant colonies are much rarer. They got their name due to their ability to glow. They usually inhabit warm tropical waters and had never been encountered in Canada before. That year, 
Researchers managed to collect over 70,000 individual specimens in five minutes using a trawl net. How did they get to the Northwest Pacific then? The movement of pyrosome colonies is controlled by currents, tides, and waves. Climate change has made the waters warmer in the northwest part of the Pacific, allowing these plankton to migrate massively to North America. Canada attracts tourists not only with its natural beauty, but also with its World Hair Freezing Contest that has been held in Yukon since 2011. The night air temperature here drops to minus 22 degrees Celsius. Contestants dip into the hot springs of Takini to avoid freezing. They then create funny hairstyles on wet hair and take photos. Men also participate by styling their beards. Photos are sent to the jury members who select the funniest and most creative look. Results are announced in March, and the winner receives a cash prize of $750 and a pass for free visits to the hot springs. The Macmillan family from Canada made a difficult decision to abandon modern gadgets and replace them with technology from 1986. The idea came to the head of the family, Blair, after noticing that his eldest son was engrossed with games on the iPad and began refusing to go for walks. Blair reminisced about his own childhood, which was indeed different. As a boy, he spent a lot of time outdoors with friends. Children back then were hard to distract from their outdoor activities even for meals. Blair decided that his son's childhood should be the same as his own. To make this happen, he and his wife removed all modern gadgets from the home and even refrained from using GPS navigation in their car. Instead, the Macmillans now use technology from the late 80s. The family watches movies and cartoons on a VCR and listens to music recorded on audio cassettes. Blair also regularly takes pictures of his children with a film camera. The couple admits that they sometimes miss modern gadgets, but won't abandon their decision for the sake of their son's happy childhood. In the city of Kamloops, in the province of British Columbia, 215 human remains were discovered on the site of a former residential school for indigenous children. All belonged to children. In 1876, under the rule of Prime Minister John MacDonald, the Indian Act was enacted. According to this document, Canadian authorities had the right to seize lands from indigenous people. In 1884, the Act was amended to establish special residential schools where indigenous children were forcibly placed to integrate them into Canadian society. Conditions in these facilities were terrible. Thousands of students died from hunger, disease and violence. Astonishingly, this atrocious system operated until the 1990s. Only in 2008 did the Canadian government review its history and officially apologize for what had happened. For over a hundred years, under the guise of residential schools, a real genocide of North American Indians was carried out. During this time, over 20,000 children died in these facilities. This number grows each year as new secret graves of children are discovered. In the province of Saskatchewan, not far from the town of Hafford, there is a unique grove of twisted aspen trees. This place is very popular among tourists, and it is visited by around 5,000 tourists every year. In this grove, aspens grow in an unusual manner. Their trunks twist and curve in strange ways. Why this happens remained a mystery for a long time. To find an answer to this question, seeds were collected from the grove. After planting them elsewhere, it was found that the grown saplings showed the same anomaly. This led scientists to assume that the reason for the twisting lies in a certain gene that could be lethal for the trees. The fact is that aspens with such characteristics cannot grow tall. If normal trees grew beside them, they would not get enough vital sunlight. However, the entire aspen grove consists only of these abnormal trees, so they managed to survive even in their twisted state. Since the grove has become a peculiar landmark, gardeners have paved pathways on its territory so that anyone can walk among these curious trees.
In August of 2023, in Yoho National Park in Western Canada, archaeologists made a significant scientific discovery. In the shale near Burgess Mountain, they found fossils of the oldest known jellyfish. After analyzing them, it became clear that their age is 505 million years. This means that jellyfish lived in this area long before the first dinosaurs appeared. The fossils were preserved in excellent condition. Thanks to this, scientists determined that the body size of the jellyfish reached 20 centimeters. They looked no different from their modern relatives and had the same bell-like shape with tentacles, the number of which was 90. The discovered species was named Burgessa medusa phasmiformis. Scientists classified them as Cnidarians, the most ancient multicellular living beings. Their bodies consist of 95% water, making such fossils a real rarity. The last time archaeologists managed to find Cnidarians was in the early 1990s. The discovery of this new species of ancient jellyfish in Canada allowed scientists to understand that the food chain during the Cambrian period looked quite different than previously thought. It was earlier believed that only creatures with hard shells inhabited the seas at that time, as no representatives of Canadarians older than 500 million years had been found before. In Canada's Northwest Territories, a local hunter shot an unusual bear. Light fur with distinct brown markings and a size surpassing that of a regular brown bear were noticeable. DNA analysis showed that the bear is a hybrid between a grizzly and a polar bear. These two species are completely different. Polar bears eat fish, are larger in size, and live in polar regions. Grizzlies, on the other hand, live in forested areas and are either herbivores or scavengers. This kind of bear has been named Pisley. It is the only specimen found in the wild in Canada, although there are already known cases of white and brown bears breeding in zoos. Scientists are now considering classifying the Pisley as a separate subspecies of bears. The year 2022 was significant for paleontologists in North America. In June of that year, a gold miner in the Yukon accidentally discovered a well-preserved baby mammoth mummy. The find was taken to the University of Calgary, where scientists conducted research on the remains of the baby. The baby mammoth turned out to be female and was named Nun Choga, which translates from the language of the local inhabitants as Big Animal Baby. The estimated age of the mummy is over 30,000 years. Studies of the remains also showed that before dying, Nun Choga ate grass. This allowed scientists to assume that she was distracted by food and got separated from her mother. After walking into muddy swamps, she gradually got stuck and could not get out. Judging by the size of the female, she was no more than a month old at the time of her death. Nun Cho Ga is the only mammoth found on Canadian territory. Paleontology professor Dan Sugar admitted that he was amazed by this discovery, as he became the person who had the opportunity to see and personally study a woolly mammoth. In August 2007, a 12-year-old girl walking along the coast of Jedediah Island found a men's sneaker in the sand. When she looked inside, she was shocked. The girl found a human foot in the sneaker. Six days later, a married couple found another men's foot in a sneaker on Gabriola Island. Over the next year, local residents found five more feet in footwear. These gruesome discoveries kept appearing one after another and this story seriously alarmed Canadians. Police were baffled about what was happening and where these feet were coming from. Among the theories regarding their origin was the notion of a serial killer. Many of you might have had similar thoughts, but this turned out to be incorrect. Forensic analysis determined that the feet were not severed. Moreover, DNA analysis showed that most of the found remains belonged to suicides. After some time, the police finally figured out why footwear with feet started appearing on the shores of Salish. It turns out crustaceans were to blame. We all know that these animals are not averse to feasting on carrion, and deceased humans are no exception. However, human feet with their multitude of bones attract them the least. But why were all these feet specifically in sneakers? The answer is simple. 
Firstly, this type of footwear has been and remains very popular. Secondly, sneakers are much lighter than other types of shoes, allowing them to float with a small load, such as a foot. All the horrific finds belonged to people who had died due to accidents or suicides. Their bodies became food for crustaceans, and the lightweight footwear allowed the remains to float rather than sink, ultimately being washed ashore. In 2019, archaeologists conducted extensive excavations on Trichet Island. During these digs, they made a sensational discovery. Traces of the oldest settlement were found on the island, including fishing hooks, a fire-starting tool, and primitive hunting implements. All were located approximately two and a half meters underground. In addition to the artifacts, an ancient hearth was also discovered. Minute particles of charcoal were carefully extracted from it. Analysis of the charcoal revealed that the age of the ancient hearth is 14,000 years, which means it is nearly three times older than the Great Pyramid of Giza. This discovery has allowed scientists to determine that the village on Trichet dates back to the last Ice Age, making it one of the oldest settlements ever found in North America. It was previously believed that the first humans arrived in North America about 13,000 years ago. However, this find has shown that scientists were mistaken and that humans had settled this land at least 1,000 years earlier. The discovery of the ancient settlement changes all historical facts about the migration of the first people to the continent. Moreover, the find may help scientists learn about new routes that ancient people took to move to new lands. Sometimes marketers astonish us with their creativity. A great example of this is an advertising project from the Canadian retail company, Canadian Tire. To draw attention to their frost-resistant battery, Motomaster Eliminator Ultra AGM, the company came up with the idea to shoot a video featuring a pickup truck made out of ice. Moreover, to demonstrate the real performance of the battery, they decided to only make the body of the truck out of ice. The body was made from five tons of ice and was crafted by leading masters from the company Ice Culture, specializing in ice sculpture creation. Even the professionals admitted that this was the most complex project of their careers. The body turned out to be crystal clear. This was achieved using special technology to purify the water from oxygen. Amazingly, during the presentation, the truck traveled more than one and a half kilometers at a speed of about 20 kilometers per hour. The frost-resistant battery managed to function even while being housed under an ice hood. Canada is often called the country of a thousand lakes, and for good reason. This nation boasts a large number of bodies of water, but perhaps only one of them stands out as truly unique. Klyluk, or Spotted Lake. This lake attracts attention with its unusual appearance. During winter, autumn, and spring, it remains inconspicuous, but everything changes in the summer. In hot weather, its surface is covered with multicolored spots, each clearly defined by a white salt boundary. Klyluk attracts tourists with its beauty. However, access to its territory is nearly impossible, as it is enclosed by barbed wire. One might think that this enclosure exists because the lake poses some danger, but in reality, it has been privately owned since the time of World War I. Before then, it was not profitable, but everything changed once a large amount of salt and minerals were discovered in it. Due to its detrimental impact, authorities decided to hand the lake over to the indigenous people, who started caring for it and restricted access to it. This decision helped preserve the lake and the surrounding nature. In 2021, on the territory of Yukon at the Little Flake Mine, gold miners discovered enormous bones. The remains were handed over to the government, which led to large-scale excavations at the site. During these, three complete skeletons belonging to woolly mammoths were found. In an interview, Canadian paleontologist Grant Zazula stated that although miners in Yukon frequently find bones of ancient animals, full skeletons had been discovered for the first time. According to him, 
The gold miners found the remains near a layer of volcanic deposits, estimated to be about 29,000 years old. At that time, a volcanic eruption occurred in the Aleutian Islands, which the mammoths seemingly experienced. Zazula also explained that the research on the remains is still in the initial stages, and scientists are yet to determine what caused these creatures' deaths and whether they were related. That's all from me. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to rate it, subscribe to the channel, and hit the bell. Your engagement is the best reward for me. Thank you for your attention. See you soon. Goodbye.